Hello, hello everybody, and welcome into a series that I'm personally very excited about, but I don't know if anyone else cares about, but that's okay. Um, Spiral Knights. This is a game that is free on Steam. Um, it was originally just a browser game, but they also put it on Steam just for, I guess, bonus access. So I guess it's not technically a Steam game, but it's a game you can get on Steam. That's how I found it, and I have sunk a lot of hours into this game, I'll be very honest. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really excited about this game. Not a ton of people YouTube it, I suppose. Um, it doesn't really have a massive community. It never really has, and it certainly doesn't now. But um, I honestly think it's one of the best free games that I've ever played in my life, um, specifically for the combat. Uh, most free games that I had played, RPGs anyways, uh, had sort of RuneScape style combat, where it's just like, you walk up and click a dude, and then you just hope for the best dice rolls possible. But this game is actually like, you know, um, real time, you're completely in control all the time. It honestly has combat similar to Dark Souls, except for the fact that it's very easy. Um, I mean, you got like your shield, you got your dash, you dash and gives you invincibility frames, your shield blocks all damage, but um, your shield can break at some point and then it is 100% ineffective, but it regenerates. Um, anyways, this game was very, very fun and I enjoyed it a lot, so I'm excited to start this series. And this is an intro sequence that they added sometime into the development of the game, a long time after it came out, so let's just watch this. And so yeah, that's the intro to the game. We're a bunch of dudes and ladies on a ship looking for sort of source of power or something and we get shot down by a giant planet. Now we're in the character creation menu. So we are gonna make character, I suppose. I was gonna say a guy, but there's not really, there's no way to specify gender. Like the most you can get is like, this hat has pigtails, somewhat feminine features. Like this one has vaguely breasts. That's really the only way you can decide if you're a guy or a girl in this game. So we're gonna design one that looks not like a girl. Because I'm not a girl. Um, bucket helm. Or a crescent, let's go with the bucket. Let's, let's go with the bucket. Black jacket. Or, whatever this is, don't really like that. That's not too bad. That one's got vaguely breasts, so no thank you. That one has vaguely also breasts, potentially. Let's... So, hmm. Let's go, yeah, let's go with this one. What's our design here? Fancy, heavy, military. That just changes your color layout, I suppose. This is the starting armor, which is essentially the worst. So. Ribbon. No, thank you. Com unit. I have to wear a headset to make these videos, so this guy has to wear a headset to enjoy his combat good times. Let's go with tall. Let, let's do it. I'm 6'2 in real life, which isn't ridiculously tall, but 
it's not short, I would suppose. We'll just go with tall. And we'll do normal eyes. Personal color is going to be a shade of blue, obviously. Or like this fancy dark purple. It's also good. Enter your name. Ash blue. Can we ashes, thank you. In this game, oh that's very wonderful. In this game you can't add numbers. Um, only letters and dashes are allowed, which means it's somewhat likely that a name you might want is already taken. I mean, that's how small the user base is, that all the names are only dashes and letters. But I guess we lucked out and got Trash Blast. We had some other options like Trash Yvon Blasting and Dr. Trashly Blast or some stuff. I don't even know. But we just lucked out straight away. Got the name I was hoping for. <sighs> Again, I don't know if this game has, like, basically any level of demand to be watched. I just thought I would make it because I really, really enjoy this game. And it's something else space seemed to go along with our current space theme. Come and Trash Blast, are you there? This is Recon Night. Oh gosh, Rendon. Rendon, I'm here. What happened? What? What is happening? You just hit the surface of Crater. Cradle. My escape pod crashed just north of your position. We should meet up and find your nearest rally point. Be careful. And ready your sword. There are hostile creatures everywhere. Watch that, Rendon. I'm heading your way, mother lover. Attack using none assigned. Whoops. It's <laughs> not useful. I guess that's fine. That was. We do that. Is that it? There we go. Who's not assigned now, sir? I swear this game destroyed the first mouse I owned. I think you have to right click every time you want to attack. And it my mouse got to the point where if I clicked and would hold it, it would just like instantly activate. Charge attack! But now I have this sweet, sweet other mouse, and it works beautifully. Okay, so white pods with red and a little heart on them are, bing, heart crates. Shocker. That's it. Sorry, health. Um, yeah, so you just run around, fight these monsters, and try to collect. Things we're collecting are crowns, which give us money. There are the money in this game. And also, the little red balls are heat. And that levels up your gear. Sort of. Crash Blast! Am I happy to see you? This place is no. This place is so alien. I'm happy to see a familiar face and not another hostile. I've established a comlink with knights that have formed a rescue camp up ahead. If you head north, you should eventually reach it. I'm going to stay here for now and locate any other knights that have crashed in the area. I'll meet you at the rescue camp before sunset. Should you encounter anything really dangerous, press space to use a shield. Bink. There it is. You get this fun little dome around you, and a uh, little symbol on the ground is like the Spiral Knights. We're part of the Spiral Order. So the symbol on the ground is their little logo for the Spiral Order. It's kind of hard to see, but you know, whatever. And yeah. This game is. I'm not quite sure who's developing it right now. I know it's been in the hands of S Sega. Sega? Sega? And also in a possibly subsidiary company um, called Three Rings. Although now I think it's like only developed by Three Rings potentially. Um, yeah, and it's got a lot of content actually. I didn't read that. I hope you read that. I just got assaulted out of nowhere by some freaking pop-up gun puppies and a huge lumber. Die! Oh, one of my friends shot an explosive box, which blew up and exploded on me. Yeah, so right now, for the sake of the tutorial, we got some NPCs that all have, like, maxed out gear. Just because, why not? Watch the dude who's dropping those bombs. He's like, go 
going out of his mind. Oh, goodness. Nicely done, trash blast. It seems you know a way around the battlefield. Come on, let's head to the camp. And you can help us figure out what the heck is going on here. End conversation. So yeah, like I said, you have a shielding. If your shield is up and your shield health is displayed here, that will get actually significantly larger as time goes on. Um, you'll take zero damage from attacks. Oh! So the heat we collected leveled up our gear to it filled the bar up to the top of level one. Now we can use items to upgrade to level two, and the process repeats up to level ten. Anyways, so if we have our shield up, we'll take no damage, and then we can dash. And while we're dashing, we have invincibility frames, which start as soon as you dash, which is a lot like Dark Souls. Or I guess you could say Dark Souls is a lot like this, because this was out way before Dark Souls. But you wouldn't say that because Dark Souls is probably a thousand times more popular than this game. And not a moment too soon, this rescue camp is facing a crisis. What's the problem, Greta? It's so like this is apparently some chick named Greta, probably. Maybe a guy, probably a girl, definitely a girl. But you have no idea about that. If there's no power in the sun is setting soon, last night all manners of horrible monsters came in. After us in the dark, we couldn't sleep. We had no power to defend our duty. We lost a lot of recruits, which is me. Need channel power to the rescue camp so that we can set up a defensive perimeter before night falls. How can I help channel power to the camp, though? I'm just one guy. Well, I'll tell you. Our scans have located an ancient generator of this camp. It should be sending power to the surface, but something seems to be diverting it. We need you to go investigate this ancient generator and divert power back to the surface, which will need to be at completely uncharted territory and teaming with monsters. Hmm. I don't know why we're hooked into a generator we've never seen. Whatever, doesn't matter. Alright, I need to talk to this hooker. Start a mission. I have officially decided not to read all these things out loud, so you may read them if you are so inclined. I'll give you about a second to pause the video between skips. A lot of these missions in this game right now are like, talk to dude and complete it. So we got Sparks of Life. Every time we go into a level, we start with one revive. If we die, we come back to life for free with full health. And then after that, if we die, we have to use the Spark of Life. So we got five of those, which is good. And the fire crystals are what we use to level up our game. So we hit U, that brings open the forge. Dang. We can level up our game. Up my sword. Oh wait, that was bad. Attention. Oh, that was lucky. Ooh, that was incredibly lucky. All right. So okay, chance for forward success is right here. And if you increase it here, like this uses two crystals, this uses three crystals, but we have the chance to eat more quickly and skip to level two. Oh, skip to level three actually. Yeah. Completely skip it. Um, this is the same for two or three. Later on, you also have a chance to get like more stuff, and also it's not always 100%. So now we're just going to level everything up using one crystal. Why not? So you can skip this animation yeah, by hitting escape. All right, all our stuff is leveled up, and now a mission. The ancient generator. Because we're so freaking good, we're gonna set it to elite. Create a Pokemon party and start. If we complete it, we get some prestige, which levels up. No, it doesn't. It levels up our prestige, which doesn't matter, just for status. And then we get some crystals to upgrade our gear and some better gear. Let's do it. I don't exactly know what the sort of setting for this game is in terms of available weapons, like you got guns, and you got swords, and you got bombs. It's sort of all over the place. The guns, um, well, in terms of damage, swords are by far the highest, with generally lowish utility, like in terms of doing things that assist your team other than just killing all the enemies. Um, and then guns are sort of a middle ground, they deal a good amount of damage, like a, a pretty good amount of damage, but they also have um, 
a lot of abilities. I can do like status effects or I mean a lot of times there'll be ranged enemies out of range of swordsmen like over in crossable gaps and stuff so having swords or guns can deal with some of those enemies that you normally couldn't get to. Oh, uh oh. Probably one of the major complaints that people can have about this game is the lag. So you might be experiencing that to some degree. Like when I teleport all over the place. So anyways, guns are kind of middle ground between utility and damage. And then bombs are almost pure utility. Um, anybody who plays this game with bombs and tries to deal bunches of damage basically gets hated on by everybody in the party. So. But a good bomber is like the nicest thing on earth to have on your team. It's just nobody wants to do it because it gets kind of boring. But I usually play as a swordsman just because when I started the game I just bought swords and swordsman gear. So that's kind of how it went. I don't really know what to do for this guy. I don't know. Since I already used swords on my main account, which might make guest star appearances from time to time for like high level um, events, like seasonal events and stuff, it might be a bit silly to have another account that's the exact same thing but worse. So I might try to do like a blend of swords and bombs or something. Or bombs and guns, maybe? Bombs and guns might be fun. More utility, and I could try to learn some of the stuff I don't always do. Be the helpful guy that everybody likes to have around. That's how we like to think about ourselves, right? Be helpful. And make people love us. But anyways, right now we're in the training camp. Um, oh, I don't even know if I mentioned this. This game is an MMO. So it's all about multiplayer and whatnot. Um, right now we're just in the training camp, which is basically its own little section that is a tutorial that we'll never come back to after we complete it, and we're pretty much cut off from all the players in the game right now. The thing I just shot was a ghost block. If you shoot it, it disintegrates all the blocks that it is touching, and like any blocks, it's like all these blocks are connected together to a ghost block, so if I, if I hit the ghost block, if I, if I lag over towards the ghost block and I hit it, all these blocks disappear. Or if I shoot this one, ding, those all disappear. Green boxes with clover shapes on them are prize boxes. And you get money and heat from them and like little really useful items. Um, there are also red versions of prize boxes, which generally have better stuff. Um yeah. I basically have done and seen everything in this game and know all the stuff. So I could just like take the time right now to shout all the things to you guys, but I probably won't talk about stuff until we see it. Just for the sake of not being confusing and un-understandable. Or understandable, if you prefer. Right, so these are explosion boxes. If you damage them in any way, they explode and cause a chain reaction. These ones right here are timed explosive boxes, which have a little countdown timer on them. Until they explode. They get kind of annoying. That was a health capsule I just picked up and just used it to heal yourself. I powered up the generator, I believe. So this game, I'm like 90% sure that it started out in the hands of Sega and then it moved on to Three Rings. And when Sega was making it, um, they put out a lot of content, like a ton of stuff. And then when they kind of jumped ship and it moved over to Three Rings specifically, like, they haven't put out that much stuff. I mean, I think this game came out in like 2012 or 2011 or something. It's been around for a long time. But um, there is a ton of content if you start the game right now. But if you had already been playing the game and done all the stuff, then basically nothing new ever comes out, except for cosmetic items, like accessories and costumes that don't actually add anything to the game. But, no. I still think it's fun. I still think the game that is there is very enjoyable. Yeah. 
but I could see people not wanting to play it simply because nothing new almost ever gets added. But like in this case where I'm saying, hey, let's start from the beginning and show off some of the stuff in this game, there'll be a lot of stuff to see. Which is A lot, sadly, a lot of the bosses in this game kind of do the whole invincible for a long period of time and then vulnerable for a while style. Like, there's four major bosses, um, and then like later on there's harder versions of the same bosses, but there's, there's four basic hard bosses. And um, two out of four of them have long periods of invincibility followed by wail on me as much as you can while I'm in vulnerable mode, which I don't particularly like. However, the way it's set up, the two that you can attack as much as you want are sort of insanely underpowered just because you can kill them so quickly if you have the right gear. If you don't have the right gear, they're very difficult. But I guess that's basically the story of this entire game is once you learn how to do the boss, it's very, very easy. And if you get geared properly for it, it's even easier. So. There's definitely a lot of challenge to be had if you're playing either by yourself or with a group of people that know as much as you do. But you can easily just invite a top level player into your group to help you through like the most basic stuff. And they'll absolutely destroy everything for you and lead you by the nose. And it's just really not that fun. Alrighty, we got some sweet, sweet stuff. And we'll be equipping that here shortly. I can show you all the equipment menu and how exciting and riveting that is. Alrighty, so if we hit tab, we open up the arsenal, which is all of our gear. So far, like, we have one sword, the worst sword in the game, we have one gun, the worst gun in the game. But we got a new piece of armor, a Vita suit, which increases our health by one, which is great. So we'll equip that. And let's see, oh yeah, also all of our stuff up. Through all this, forge, forge, forge. Okay, sweet. Let's see what we um, I guess for this part, we just have to crank through missions. This is a contact spot HQ, which is just a story mission, I suppose. You still get some good rewards for it. Um, there's been a distress signal. Nice to meet you. What is our situation? Tell about everything we just did. Sounds like we're already the best. And we fought a dude, and she was surprised, and we didn't even know what it was. Okay. The clockwork seems to be built by the gremlins, so the whole planet we're on is, like, constructed by these things called the gremlins. They're one of the major enemy types in the game. And she's telling us about the hub world called Haven. And we're gonna get there someday. Yeah, damage bonus medium to guns. For all guns. Equip that. Ahaha. Look how ugly we are. And we got a wrench. Which is a different type of weapon. Alright. Crossing the chasm. Sounds like that is. Let's do it. And I was thinking about it a little bit. I think I will do a gun and bomb run. Or for the character specifically, I think that could be. Oh, we got Rehendin. Reneed Head and then Reheed Ned Head and then with us, we got our buddy. And he also has a five star gun. Um gear is ranked by stars. The gear you start with is zero star and it goes up to five star. And he has a gun called the Blood Steel is one of the most commonly used five-star guns because it's incredibly useful at the most difficult boss, which is also the best place to make money. So everybody who wants money wants a blitz needle, which is everybody. And the way this game works, it is an RPG. 
um, but there's no experience really or leveling other than your gear so the only way to level your gear really or get better gear is with money so money is experience essentially which i guess is also sort of a large souls type thing where money and experience and all that is all the same thing there's just no way to lose it really in this game unless you get scammed by other terrible people little frog. This game kind of skips around the stuff naturally, and it seems to be being made worse by also recording at the same time. So if it becomes unbearable, I might have to sadly scrap the series or find something to resolve that issue, but nothing springs to mind at this moment. Alright. We have this thing called an artifact. It's on Red and it's written ahead of the dead and it's back right there. I mean, seriously. Brandon? Brandon. I don't, I don't even know, guys. I have no idea. But he's like, yeah, let's just trust this guy and give it to him. And this guy's like, ha, joke's on you. I'm gonna blow you up anyways because I'm a giant tool and you're naive. And yeah. Now the whole freaking place is on fire. On fire. We gotta get out of here, guys. Give me a damage from monster attacks by pressing Q. Which is this. Your dash has a little cooldown, and it's shown at the bottom of the screen. Make my dash. A little dashy symbol like an 8 seconds. Alright, this is good. This red thing is a health capsule. This blue thing is a remedy capsule. Health capsules just heal you, and then remedy capsules remove status effects like being on fire or being poisoned or being stunned. Which can honestly be worse than being almost dead. Target turned off, you can activate it again by holding left control. 
Target an enemy, it'll show you their health card and what kind of damage they deal. In this case, it's elemental. Green represents health. Um, and it'll show you their weakness damage type. Every monster family has a weakness type. The weapons we start with just do normal, which nothing is weak to normal, but also nothing resists normal, so it's kind of your all rounder. Every enemy type also has a type that they resist. There's a strange crimson symbol on Razmog's clothing. And I'll be holding on to this artifact now because I don't trust we're heading at dead dead and to not make ridiculous decisions and throw it away. Yeah, let's get it back to the Sprout HQ before something terrible happens. You fool. Astounding! I would have never expected a new recruit to crawl out of that fiery wreckage alive! You must really be something else. The name's Farron, Lieutenant of the Spiral Order. We had believed this entire complex was derelict until the elevator leading to it suddenly surged to life. Upon investigating, the whole place soon went up in a blaze. How'd you end up here? Tell the Mother Lover about all the Mother Loving events. I see. This will be very interesting information for Sparrow HQ. My base? Camp in Haven. It's just up ahead. Head on up the elevator and meet with the other knights who survived the crash like yourself. The techs in the lab will be eager to study that artifact. They'll see to it once you get to Havana. Don't worry about the others in the rescue camp. Thanks to you, we have a functioning elevator system. To reach them, you've saved them all. Thank you, Lieutenant. I'll head into Haven. Salute. There are helpful little, like, emote commands you can do, such as salute and yes, and other helpful stuff. And we got fat hundos and some useless garbage. It's kind of a little recap that tells you how much money you got throughout the whole thing and any items you found. And since it was the second mission of the entire game, we didn't really get anything that great. But I'm not going to complain about free stuff. So now we're loading Ethan, which is the main base. It is where all the people are at. Ooh, never mind. This is slightly different. Wake up. We got a bunch of junk. A trash blast, I see you've acquired a proto band. They're always very useful for when you need to go deal with groups of enemies. How do I use it? Bombs are special in that they have no standard attack. A bomb can only be used as a charge attack, so make sure to evade monsters while charging. Feel free to give it a try, just remember to equip it at that arsenal station up ahead. I'll take the artifact to the lab. Or are you gonna give it to some passing dog on the way? Hmm? Hmm? Some evil dog. Hmm? When you're ready, you should head into Haven to meet up with the rest of the crew. I have a feeling we might be stuck in this plant for quite some time, so... Might as well see what we can do to help. Yeah, we're gonna be stuck here until the developers come up with anything else, which will be forever. Let's equip that bomb. Let's equip it right now. Well, should we? Should we, though? Oh, fair chance of cutting a moderate stun. Let's absolutely equip that bomb right now. It doesn't have a standard attack. You just can all these and charge attack. Make sure to evade those monsters. You place it down, a little damage circle, and then blah blah blah. It damages them. Oh! Yeah. You better not sleep, man. I don't want to take a look at it. Oh yeah! This guy. Oh. This guy, Guardian Knight. Welcome to Haven, Trash Blast. We've been expecting you. Ah, oh, boss. Yeah. You get nothing.
you can't get a shield like those Guardian Knights. They have this like massive tower shield that's got like a holographic rainbow around it. You can't get any of that stuff. There's not really anything close. To it. And it definitely looks awesome. But sadly, we are stuck. Less cool stuff. Oh well, what can you do? Oh. You made it, Trash Blast! I'm happy to see you arrive here in Haven, safe and sound. I'll confirm a spy each kill you have an undertaking missions in the Haven to start. I'll issue a few missions that will help you get accommodated with all that Haven has to offer. Be sure to say hello to strangers that you've been exploring. Strangers, what the heck? The inhabitants of... The inhabitants native of Haven are called strangers. Here's a photo of one now. You can't miss them. They're towering, cloaked figures with masks. My accent has changed. Despite their intimidating appearance, they have been extremely helpful to us and mostly keep to themselves a lot of times that they're being extremely helpful. All the words of the town certainly seem to like them anyways. I'll be sure to say hello when I see a stretch. Great. Thanks for being a good investor. Lastly, I need you to speed up on something called energy. Very important to your mission here, Criddle. I'm all your squad Tell me about that. I don't give a crap anymore. Energy! You can use the power stuff. It costs a crap ton of money. You can only buy it with real life money. And then you can sell it to other players for making money. And I have never bought energy with real life money. Oh. Forge. Up up your key. We did. Congratulations. Alright, so now we're in Haven. This is the town square, which is the main center area hub. These guys just talk to you, give you some flavor text about stuff. Um, this is another real life guy. His name is Schmultz. 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 Wait. Schmultz. Schmultz. Goodness gracious. Hello, hello. I'm a noob. Give me money. Alright. Up here we have the auction house, which is where all the cool kids hang out. And you can buy any number of things. Here we have the alchemy machine for making pet foods. We don't have a pet, so we can't make any foods. Here we have the training hall, which is where you can just attack stuff to test out your guns and armor and swords. Here we have, oh, oh look, a bunch of birds that you can scare. A commemorative plaque to one of the game's first developers. I since left the game. His name was Nick, and he had a special costume that could make him look like a blob of jelly with a toupee and a pipe. It was really awesome. So yeah, this is the basic area where we'll be spending most of our time, I suppose, when we're in between missions. So anyways, this has been an introduction to Spiral Knights. Um, I'm excited for this Let's Play series. I mean, first off, it's in space, and second off, I have, don't tell the cops, over 1,800 hours in this game. So, it's very near and dear to my heart. Very familiar to me. So, I'm excited to see if people give a dang about this game. And if not, that's alright, because I'm still going to enjoy it. Anyways, I hope you all have a great night, and I will see you very soon. Bye.